Hey guys, this is be video 31 for the how to design build a 1950s era uh, solid body art shop jazz guitar using Stuart McDonald templates and, and a bunch of hand tools and a lot of time. Uh, I got a, a really long video apparently here because this is about the seventh time I've <laughs> done this video and I keep erasing it. So I'm going to back up, punt, and just, just approach it from a real simple stance. And any of the heavy duty detail stuff, I'll cover that in the last video, probably Sunday, because this it's almost finished. Uh, but I will cover a few things briefly just off the list. The frets are beveled at 70 degrees. I know I had mentioned numerous times I was going to start out at 80, and I did, and it just was not enough, so I took it to 70. Probably would have been safe to have taken it to 65 degrees, but I'll feel better once the final binding is on there and the binding is shaped to the the lower and then uh, rounded up into the fretboard, um, just like a Benedetto would, would be. And then uh, on that note, uh, then I'll determine whether I want to uh, pitch the uh, fret ends to 65 degrees. But right now they're 70 and they, they feel really good. I've played a lot of air guitar with it and it uh, feels good. Uh, I'll cover this briefly, but I'm not going to explain any of my reasoning right now because that's what kept making everything so long winded. I had mentioned that there was a possibility I was probably just going to glue the fretboard down with tight bond, but that I really didn't want to. I really wanted to uh, glue it down with an epoxy, blah, 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 blah. Well, I, I glued it down with epoxy, but it wasn't because I was being difficult or stubborn. There was a reason I ran into a bit of a cricket um, from a standpoint of assuring that it worked visually and functionally. So I'll go straight to the finish line and the answer is I, I, I achieved both. It's going to be perfect visually and the fretboard is perfectly on center line with the guitar body. Uh, and the short is uh, they they designed this guitar body on a, on a straight 90 degree corner right here. All of the guitars that I build, I always put them on, on a one degree pitch into the cutaway. In other words, rather than it being 90 degrees, it's, it's, it's 91 degrees. Okay. And that assures you that that one extra degree allows the fretboard, which is a trapezoidal path, which goes from a certain, the narrow nut right here up to this space right here. Well, it, it does, it continues to flare out. So if you don't address it with pitching the cutaway at the body, you run the risk of having a, 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 an overhang. And this one was dangerously close to running into an issue of, of having a visual overhang. It's not because I was able to uh, uh, just keep an eye on it. And I'm going to stop talking about that because otherwise I'm going to get, I'm going to have to end this video as well. And I don't want to do that. So I say all that, say this. I got my way, even if I was stubborn, I got to epoxy the fretboard down, but that's not the reason I did it. I, I needed to have the ability to glue it down, clamp it, squeeze out all of the glue, whether the glue be tight bond or whether it be, uh, you know, epoxy. And then I needed the ability to pull the clamps off and assess it. And, and, and put straight edges on it and do things like this and things like that right there and just verify that there was nothing, nothing about my ego that was uh, about to get me in trouble because I can't even begin to uh, emphasize the critical importance of if you miss this by a 64th of an inch, you'll miss this by a 16th of an inch down here and Man, it'll be a nightmare situation. Now stop talking about that because we don't, we don't want to have bad dreams. And I haven't, I haven't done anything like that in about 17 years and have no intentions of ever doing it again. So nonetheless, uh, it's, it's glued down with tight bond. And it, it did allow me to uh, catch a few things that, that could have gotten me in trouble if I had used tight bond. Uh, so proceed with extreme caution if you build a, a 50s guitar from Mac templates. Uh, uh, change this to a 90, 90, uh, 91 degree, okay? Don't go 90. That's way too, way too square. 
<clears throat> excuse me. And the reason it is two square is because, as I mentioned, uh, this baby's 55 millimeter wide right there. That's pretty aggressive. And 55 millimeter is just under two and three sixteenths of an inch. Okay. And if you're going from a, uh, now this is one in 23, 30 seconds inch nut up to, uh, we'll, we'll just go ahead and say almost two and three sixteenths of an inch right there. That's a very aggressive trapezoidal path. It's fairly wide. It's, it's a full two and a quarter of an inch back here. But why? Because that's exactly what this calls for. Uh, that, that guitar is not that wide. But I didn't want to start uh, introducing what I thought was right or wrong. or the, No way, man. I, I built this thing exactly per specs, but with the consideration of, uh, you know, just, you know, like I said, that right there. And, and it is what it is. But nonetheless, from a visual standpoint, it's going to be awesome. It's going to work out. It's going to look great. It's going to look incredible. And not only that, what's so exciting is the fretboard is still perfectly, perfectly, truly on the center at the nut. And it's perfectly, perfectly on the center at the body. Okay, so could I have done that without without the templates? Probably not. That's I'm pretty good, but the templates really guaranteed that based on you know the these two original locations. The that's the um, uh, that's the bridge the bridge locations because if you start if you start massaging different designs that, that I might have put into the guitar, then I might have overlooked how it was supposed to interact with something else. For instance, like a, a, a P90 opening that's not going to receive uh, uh, a, a, a pickup a pick surround. Gosh, sometimes I, I, I can see what it is I want to say, but sometimes I, I can't think what it is. I can't get the word out. Uh, pickup surround. This is probably one of the most unforgiving builds I've ever done because it doesn't have uh, pickup surrounds. And this pocket has got to be perfectly centered with the width of that neck. In other words, everything's crazy critical. Uh, I knew that going in on the front end. But just proceed with caution. If you build a, a P90 type guitar, it, it, you have to really think about things like that because it would have been it would have been so sad for that binding under there to been up under that piece right there okay all right and as, as i as i promised i wouldn't i got long-winded but i'm gonna leave let me check the time um uh, not too bad seven minutes and 53 seconds feels like it's been 45 minutes probably because it has uh what else should i talk about um so i think i clarified it is glued down with tight bond and let's let's talk about horrific worst case scenarios just ever so briefly. Uh, if something happened and this neck got catastrophically damaged, uh, I would imagine that since I was the guy that built the guitar, I would probably be the first one called and given the opportunity to repair it. And if that be the case, uh, I would be honored and uh, nonetheless would probably be far more likely to give someone a smoking deal about doing the repair. Uh, because, you know, I'm a little bit emotionally attached to the guitar. It's impossible to do something like this and not care about it. So I say that to say this. Um, I came up with different ideas about how you could uh, salvage this fretboard if it did not get damaged. But let's say the neck broke real bad, and, and let's say it just came apart back here, and there was no way to re reuse the neck. Now, if it got broke above the headstock, this, it's, it's a paint grade guitar. Trust me, send it back to me, man. I can rebuild this whole top end and we'll never even know, okay? But if it broke down here and it was just gonna be a nightmare situation, uh, I've already figured out ways to come in with the Sawzall and just, you know, cut the, the, cut the baby completely in two. And then, and then the only thing I'd have to do is just gingerly cut, take the fretboard off. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. But all I'm saying is um, everything that I had mentioned about using the tight bond is, is true because if something happened and you took it to a shop, uh, they're, they're going to really struggle getting everything apart and, and, and not losing their, you know, what on it because those guys have to make money. 
And uh, me, I, I really don't have to make a ton of money because I'm basically re retired for the most part. But uh, nonetheless, uh, I epoxied it down for that primary reason right there because I wanted to monitor everything as it was gluing and going together and just making certain that also my little binding ledge was consistent and that everything was working out. And it did. It worked out so well. So anyway, I'm just going to stop talking uh, about that because uh, it's irrelevant. And because if it were to get damaged, uh, I probably would be the one doing the repair. And I know how to do that. It's, it's not that difficult. All right. I hope I didn't have my head in between the camera. I'm really bad about leaning, leaning up into the, uh, in between the guitar and the camera there. Let me look at my list and see what else I need to talk about. Um, oh yeah, I had, um, uh, I had shot you an email earlier, Ethan, what I meant by the, uh, little Stuart McDonald, um, uh, um, uh, side dots, uh, you, you had called me out on it like a month ago and I'll shoot straight. I forgot to order them. And, uh, because I knew there's only 10 in this packet and we need 11 for your guitar and uh, because, you know, we, as you mentioned, well, you know, you've got the first fret and uh, neither here nor there. I, fe I forgot to order them. But I say that to say this. When, uh, when I was getting ready to glue this outer binding on, I was considering gluing it on before I installed the fretboard onto the neck. And I, I went through this whole process of two different options either do it that way and have a completely finished fretboard in hand that you glue down or have a fretboard that the, this is the way Robert Benedetto did his where he he actually uh, you know glued the fretboard to the lower the lower was still square it hadn't even been shaped yet and then he built out the whole fretboard up here and then uh, he was doing all the binding on to the lower, which, which, which was really, uh, really brilliant, uh, you know, in a way, because it was a great way to learn how to do it. Now, that's not the way you would do it if you were doing mass production work. But nonetheless, I was so thankful that I learned how to bind a guitar neck, you know, in, in, in just, just piecemeal, like the ebony first, then the inner binding and then whether it's black white black white black and then stop and then do the frets and cut the frets blah 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 do the outer binding in other words doing it in piecemeal and that's when i it hit me i was like man i'm going to revert back to the way i learned to, to do them and i went ahead and uh glued this fretboard down with the epoxy and that gave me time to order uh the uh, Stuart mcdonald <laughs> Uh, side dots, the little tortilloid, and it also gave me time to order some more. Uh, where's the glue? Where's the glue? Where's the glue? Where's the glue? This is pretty critical, and for you guys that are out there building a guitar, uh, I, I might cover this in a little while, uh, but basically, I did some really uh, detailed research about how does binding react if you glue two pieces of binding together by using uh, SIG cement doesn't work not if you're doing white to white but if you're doing white black it's fine but if you're using uh, Stuart McDonald glue it's pretty darn good or just straight acetone versus jet glue in other words I came in and did some real detailed analysis I'm gonna see if that'll show up uh, jet glue did not work it left a pin strike Okay, jet, jet glue meaning CA glue. Uh, acetone, straight, straight acetone, pretty darn good. So I say all that to say this. While I was, uh, while I knew I had to order the tortilloid side dots, I went ahead and ordered the new Stuart McDonald glue because the best of the best was the Stuart McDonald glue with an acetone blended in. That was the best uh, melting of the, the uh, white to white binding. Okay, and uh, it gave me time to just realize, well, this is actually going to work out so much to my advantage because I can go ahead and epoxy, I go ahead and place the order, okay, I got all that stuff ordered, 
And uh, it's coming via FedEx uh, from Ohio. It was supposed to be here today, but it did not come today. Uh, it's going to be here tomorrow. But nonetheless, uh, it after, after it's all said and done, it's going to be the best job. Okay? Because I will be now, uh, I'll have my brand new glue, and I won't worry about, see, with that other, I might have gotten 60% through the job, ran out of the Stuart McDonald, and then had to have finished it with just straight acetone. Or finished it with a SIG and it might have uh, shown so anyway that was that's my reasoning and that's what I meant in email when I said I had to order some new stuff anyway uh, what else might I want to talk about uh, straight line tests this is pretty uh, pretty important uh, when you let me check the time because probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna revert back and I'm gonna talk back to even more of the reasons as to why I uh, uh, use the use the epoxy. Let me get this jacked up here a little bit. Okay, as I already mentioned, when you're working with the epoxy, you can put the epoxy down super thin. Uh, you know, get you know, um, squeegee it into the lower, squeegee it into the back of the upper, and there's almost. There's, it's just a, a, a paper thin mill thickness of, of epoxy on both surfaces. And then once you put them together, I don't care how thin you go, you're going to have squeeze out. And that's a good thing. That's what you want. But the cool thing with the epoxy, the 24 hour, is it's squeezing out. You can take the clamping call off and you can clean it and just monitor everything and just make certain that you're, st that you're not sloppy. Now keep in mind, when I was epoxying this fretboard down, wherever you see a mahogany and all this right here and all this might you can probably still see the tape strop right there it, it was completely taped off every bit of this was taped off all you could see was just the flat surface so even if i got sloppy it wasn't a big deal but it i say that to say this even though the epoxy is kind of messy it's so slow that it gives you so much time to work it, it actually ends up being uh, more relaxing. Your your uh, your your uh, your uh, uh, anxiety levels much lower, all that jazz. But nonetheless, it just worked out so so much better, and uh, it also allowed me to ass assure myself that as I'm doing the initial clamping, just see, I had a pin right here and a pin right here. I hope that's in the camera. Yeah, back in. I had a pin offset to the base side and a pin offset to the treble side. Well, that allowed my little two foot level to go right down the center and then make certain that I held the top of the frets on a perfect plane. Because, why? Because I had already shaped the fretboard on the jig, which was designed on top of a four foot level. So I started out with a perfect plane once you pull that fretboard off of the jig because these frets create tension that fretboard is gonna it's going to if if you did it right that fretboard is going to bow down or it's going to uh not that's is that a bow yeah it's not a cup it's not a twit yeah it's a bow okay so it, in other words when you pull this fretboard off of the jig it, it's going to go point not that bad i'm exaggerating but over the whole course of the length it was bowed up in the middle about uh, probably about um, three um, about three sixteenths of an inch, but with just minimal pressure in the middle, it would push down. But and I'm going to try to stop reintroducing the how to rebuild the wheel, how to redesign the wheel. But in other words, you wouldn't have wanted to do the binding at that point because you run the risk of not having a really beautiful clean true truly finished bottom line edge because it might have it might have just got off a little bit but what's the, the 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 primary reason you want to epoxy the fretboard down is because by using that two foot level uh, it reintroduced the fact that it put the fretboard and the fret plane back in a perfectly perfectly straight okay point now when you can get that right there and this is not trick photography let me make sure i'm on the center because i'm about to show you 
Bear with me for a second. This is where you can take an, an, uh, an eraser shield. And I'm going to see if I can do this without keeping my, without getting my, I don't know if I can do this without getting my arm in the, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to come down here and try not to touch anything. And you're going to let this corner ride on one of the frets and just bump up against the, What does this guarantee you? This guarantees you that there's no positive nor negative space. That it guarantees you that your straight edge is sitting perfectly atop the, the frets. And it guarantees you that you're 99.9% .9 of the way to a finished guitar. And you're not going to have to do any more uh, fret leveling. Uh, why? Because you already did the fret leveling on the jig. You might have to do just a little bit of spot sanding here or there, which is normal. But I doubt it. Because Why? Because I jet glued, remember I jet glued the frets in place. They're all stiff and, and real nice and firm. Uh, the fretboard's now epoxied to the lower. The lower was perfectly true and straight. You name it. What we've got here is a guitar that is probably going to be one of the best playing guitars you've ever held. So is that an arrogant statement? I don't think so. I mean, I just, you know, when you know that your, your lines are nice and true, uh, it really should be a phenomenal player. All right. So let me stop talking about that type of stuff and check the time. Where are we? 21 minutes. Oh man. I hope it doesn't cut my, cut my, uh, audio off because, uh, and if it does, okay. So this is the tracing that you sent me, Ethan. Okay. And as I had mentioned to you, that's exactly, exactly, when I say exactly, as close to exactly as you can get without, you know, you know, questioning the ballpoint pen that you use to trace it, it's pretty much exact. So the, the headstock that I built is exactly the same as what your tracing is. So, and that line right there represents the beginning of the fretboard. Okay. Let me see if I can do this without dropping the guitar. If I drop it, I'm going to leave it on video. It'd be horrible. But it would be one for the books, that's for certain. All right, let's see if I can do this. Okay. Getting the fretboard. I hope that's showing up. But here's what's critically important. Ta da! Let me see if I can do this without. Ah, it slipped. Bear with me. I'm just trying to show you how well the headstock is going to marry up to your overlay. Okay? You will have very minimal sanding and shaping, if any at all when you're fitting your overlay. But just remember, as I had mentioned, your, your overlay, since, and you already, probably already know this, your overlay is not butting up against the fretboard on a 90 degree. Since the headstock is on a 17 degree pitch, it's just probably a half a degree under 17, but you'll have to cut your overlay on a, a bit of, uh, uh, of an angle. So I say all that to say this, how would I recommend doing that? And I hope it's still recording my audio. I would recommend, if anything, uh, you'll be we'll cover this stuff later on, but you'll be fitting it to to the nut. Let me back up. You need to put your your overlay on first, and then cut the nut into the overlay. Now the overlay is going to leave a little bit of a pot. Your overlay is not going to come all the way to the uh, fretboard. I do know that based on the overlay you're using. I know that for a fact. You're already going to have a bit of a, a pocket there, but I say go ahead and glue this down and then you'll you'll be taking a file and come in here and just filing the back of that off on that to, to fit your nut in. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop talking about that because I really, I really just, I didn't want to go into too much detail, but I just wanted to show you that we're in good shape.
What else should I cover uh, if it's even still recording? My audio, I don't think there's anything. I'm just going to stop talking uh, because I don't want to ramble on and just have to clip the video. But uh, it's turned out really well. Um, she's thick, man. It's it's one inch thick at the first fret. Uh, one and one thirty second of an inch thick at the uh, 11th fret. Now that's pretty much... That's a that's a that's a fifties neck all day long. That's that's the correct dimension. There might be a little bit more shaping that I could do right here, but I'm not going to touch it until uh, uh, I I do one more video and kind of tell you uh, what I might recommend. But uh, I say we keep these thicknesses. I like that. And what's so cool? Feels identical to that guitar. And when I say identical. Uh, other than my neck is a little bit thinner right here width wise my neck is not as wide as yours from here to here base to treble but so mine feels a little bit well it feels more narrow <laughs> but but it feels identical in thicknesses all right i'm gonna stop talking because uh turned out really well i'm very happy with that i hope that made sense uh my reasoning for why i used the uh epoxy uh, because if, if something catastrophic happened, I'll probably be the one repairing it anyway. And uh, hopefully uh, those those days uh, don't present themselves. And uh, But sometimes they do. All right, I can't think of anything else to talk about right now other than uh, I'll be a little bit more organized for the final video and just do a, a really um, just uh, point to point check off. And uh, we'll go from there. So let me check the time. Hopefully it's still recording the audio. If not, I'll clip the video. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, thanks, guys.